and having a problem with a merciful and just God who would punish people infinitely for a finite transgression, yeah? yeah? Which I think is a reasonable question to ask. You don't have to agree with my answer, but you've got to empathise with it. I hope you would agree that it's a reasonable human concern to want justice from a just and merciful God, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Your answer was really interesting. Your answer was that God punishes people infinitely because he knows if they would have lived forever, that they would have, they would have transgressed infinitely, yeah? yeah? Which took me by surprise. And I thought about it and thought, yeah, that is proportional. You're right. Infinite for infinite is proportional. Yes? Mm. So, so far I was convinced. But what I was aware <laughs> of that, that we didn't <laughs> get into... On that point, there is a, there's an ayah that says, a verse in the Quran, which says that, وَلَوْ غُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لَمَا نُهُوا عَنْ which means, had they been, so like for example, now we're assuming that they're being punished in a hellfire yeah. and they'll be screaming for the escape. Yeah. And the narrative here is that God tells us in the Quran, the had they been returned to the earth, yeah. they would have persisted in that which they were told not to do, right. which is going back to kufr or this yeah. disbelief. Yeah. So in other words, they, uh, those individuals like you said, I mean, had they had they lived for even a longer time, yeah. the time that they have been on the earth can be generalized, yeah. uh, would otherwise be generalized to uh, a longer period of time. Yeah. So no, what there's, Ali there's, said, there's, and Tony, just add on, there's another verse where it says... I one of those no, oh, oh, you should have. No, 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 forget it. It's on you should have. Wanna, Please. I just like equal representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same. Oh, I didn't know I had that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know I had that. Well, is it two on two now? No, oh. it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. You know, there's another verse okay, where, so God, where God says, just to add on to what he said, yeah. where God yeah. says, for example... You've got a mosquito on your head. They, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if God was to show them the unseen, yeah. they would still say, our eyes have bewitched us. Yeah. So even if God is saying, if I was to show them the heavens and the earth, and they came and saw everything, they'll say, this is just magic. You know, God. Yeah. So I thought your answer was really yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Within the context of what you believe, it makes sense. It's self consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Then my concern was, okay, but then, although you balance the infinite punishment with the infinite transgression, it speaks hugely to an issue of determinism and free will because now have you seen the film Minority Report? No, but can I just can I come back on this point? Yes. Sorry, uh, and I don't want to go into too much technical detail. Okay, that but is determinism I, I, is a technical right, right, it's a technical topic. There is actually somebody called Nejmuddin at uh -huh. who is a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, who wrote a book which was a book of jurisprudence. Actually, it's not relevant to um, eschatology or theodicy or theology. Sorry, what's eschatology? Eschatology is the, is the study of the afterlife, yeah, study of the after. So what he actually, he said something, but it had been refuted, uh, I'll say it. He said that one view, and that's his view, it's a very minority view, is that if God punishes us based on what we would have done, had we been completely free. Sure. That's his view. He says that, if, so God, so because the question of, um, if, if God knows everything and you know that kind of question and he's done qadr, he's uh, predetermined everything and how do we have free will how does it work yeah. his view is he predicates it on what we would have had what we would have done had there been a, uh, an event whereby everybody would have been completely free without the determination of God however there, there is a problem with that line of reasoning uh -huh. The problem is, uh, from our perspective, uh, well, from at least my perspective, a theological problem, yeah. which is that we believe that you are not to be held to account for you for something you would have done and you don't actually do. You are only held to account for that which you do. There's a, there is a hadith that we like, a, a tradition, that says that if a, if a slave or a person decides to do a bad action but doesn't follow through with it, he is not given the sin for it and so on. So is that view which is that w what would have been the case, the possibility, the realm of possibility, though it is represented in the Islamic tradition, is not one I personally subscribe to. What I believe... Good, yeah, yeah. that would have contradicted what Ali said. No, but yeah, yeah. Sorry, just to, because now I have an issue with you now. Yeah. Because how, well, how, yes, how, how does this contradict? So, because so, the Ali is talking about yeah, me yeah. saying, okay, you know what, yeah. I'm going to go and slap you. But I don't do it. I get a good deed. This is an action in this realm. What Allah is talking about is what they would have done. How does that conflict? No, no, no. So what Allah says is, He says, had they returned, they would have continued in what they were, the disbelief or whatever it is they've done. It's not saying that he predicated the judgment of their hellfire on 
that fact. Okay. He's just saying that this is a fact. He's not saying, therefore, because of that, okay. we yeah. predicate our judgment on that fact. So that if they were to yeah, it's just a conditional. Okay. It's, it's, um, that doesn't what, then totally tally with what I'm not taking mm, apart, but it yeah. doesn't seem to totally tally with the way you described it to yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah, Ali, yeah, the way yeah, Ali sold it to me, yeah. it worked in the balance. Right, right. Yeah. There is a view like that in Islam, it's a minority view. But what I'm saying is, um, the, the truth of the matter is this, is that we, we believe if you, don't, if you don't enact something, you're not punished for it. The real way we put it, is this, is that the presupposition, as I was explaining to you before, is that the punishment has to be proportionate in time with the crime. And, I, and I'll give you this example. That would be just and merciful. I mean, so you can right, right, right. So here's, here's what I'm saying. Look, if, I, I, if this man here, this good looking man, yes, <laughs> he pulls out a knife. Hopefully he doesn't because that happened before some time ago. Uh, anyway, and, 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 and he puts it and he kills me or kills this man next to him or, or something like that, right? Hopefully no one actually does this. But let's say someone does that. Now, he kills me, I, I said this to you before. And then he's presented in a court of law. And then the judge says to him, okay, we're going to, or the jury even, we're going to decide on the appropriate punishment. And this man, this strapping young man, he comes in front of the judge and he says, look, I want to be punished for exactly one second because the time I spent to kill this man yeah. was one second. Yeah. Therefore, the punishment should be one second because the crime took a second to commit. Now, someone will say, well, actually, that makes no sense because actually the crime, the gravity of the crime, despite it being a second, uh -huh. was enormous. The enormity of the gravity of the crime was huge. Therefore, this, this kind of reasoning wouldn't even apply. Yeah, I agree, it would be factual. Okay. Yes, yes. However, when you extend to infinity, infinity is a totally different order of measurement, yeah? Yes. Now, the, I, I'm not suggesting that the one-second crime should have a one-second punishment. It should be, to an extent, consequentialist and proportional. But once you start magnifying things to infinity, it means that even if everybody on the planet were to suffer torture for a hundred years, it would still be less than if Dawood, God forgive, God forbid, would have suffer um, infinite torture forever. That would be, still be right. more. So, Infinity just changes so, so, the whole So, Tony, there's, there's, there's something you've done here which requires justification on your part. We've, you said you agree with the fact that it's not always the case that if uh, a person mm -hmm. commits a crime that the, uh, the, uh, the, the punishment should be proportionate in crime, yeah. but then you said that shouldn't extend to infinity. Now, this is a value judgment which requires a burden of proof, actually. Uh, why would it, why would it, why would what would work and be operational on a finite level not be generalized to the infinite? I would argue the burden of proof actually would be on you to prove the opposite okay. because I'm simply arguing so, that finite versus yeah. finite is inherently proportional and yeah. almost self evident. No, but there is whereas yeah. infinity versus finite. I understand that. No, no, no. Is. This is the point. You're saying that justice entails yeah. that there should be proportionality in time in the infinite realm. I'm saying that if I'm dealing with a just and merciful deity, if he's not just and merciful, then no. No, no, no. But this, this is another question here right because whether now you're introducing a theological element yep. because in our first example there was no theological element so it, the, it arose within the context of a theological discussion no of course just it, merciful god. that's right but we do have a just and merciful god in the islamic tradition okay. but not just a just and merciful god we have a just and merciful and wise god okay. and we, there's many different attributes so if we were to introduce two attributes it would follow theologically that we should introduce all the attributes that are mentioned in the in the texts do you see the point? Yeah, but it would have to be self-consistent to all of those attributes. Yeah, yeah, so obviously, yeah. I, look, my one underlying principle yeah, yeah. is I seek self-consistency right. within a discipline and right. relative to other disciplines. Yeah. Yes. So I think it's reasonable to look at any religion or ideology or human being and go, are they being self-consistent? And we all understand when people are not self-consistent. If somebody lies or they're dishonest or they're duplicitous, we all spot that instantly. Mm. So the acid test for truth seems to be self-consistency. And if I'm presented with what? a just and merciful God by Muslims and Christians, mm. and I'm kind of a fan of both, okay, right, what? then I expect to see acted out yes. a just and merciful policy what? and infinity versus the finite, infinite punishment for a finite transgression. Okay, on the uh, what, what I will say, what I'll say to you is uh, what you've outlined epistemologically is what is a necessary condition for truth, but according to majority understanding, is not an, a, a sufficient condition for truth. Because con well, I wasn't claiming it was sufficient, but I do think. Yeah, it's so, so it's necessary. It's so, it's, so you're saying that in order for truth to be truth, 
that it would have to be at least consistent. So we need to tick that box? Yes, it no, if, if, if that's what you're saying, then we agree. Now, so there's two uh, aspects of burden that you have in terms of proving your postulation if, in fact, you are making a claim. The first one would be that in the infinite realm, that punishment has to be uh, proportionate in time. For example, had someone committed X crime, in, in the finite realm that that should not right yeah. translate to why punishment in the infinite realm yeah. this is a claim you can't say There's it's no not way I'm making that claim. right right great so you would have to provide evidence for that claim you see i don't think the burden of proof is on it, it is it's definitely on it you can shut down that dis i think it's a natural human response yeah if you're seeking self consistency no, but you're, you argue no. that that is a disproportionate okay. situation. But Ali squared the circle. He did square the circle. No, but before before we get to Ali's squaring of the circle, let's go back. Is that impossible uh, existence? No, no, but let's let. let <laughs> no, yeah, I know he, We're going into necessary. No, no, no. Look, 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 look. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is, yeah. yeah, if you make a claim, you have to have some level of justification for that claim. All right. I do. Truth is self consistent. Truth is self-consistent. The properties of God are justice and merciful. It's wait, wait, wait. me. Wait, wait, wait. We, we could yep. poll the crowd no, no. on whether they that's, think... That's a fallacy. The, okay. the, the crowd could be ignorant. I agree. Yeah. Uh, just as an yeah. opening... And, opening. But, and but the fact that he's there is definitely okay. some level of ignorance okay. inside. Okay. Everyone is going, I'm only coming. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I, I would, we're, we're just getting trenched here. I would contest that the burden of proof would be on you to show that no, no, okay. infinite punishment for fire. No, no, you were, you were saying something important. You said that you expect self-consistency. Yeah. And then you said that the attributes of God are X and Y. Well, and well, then you Islam, said Islam, I think, think claims justice and mercy. So right, right. Christianity, so ex it's a good ex debate. No, no problem, but that's not all it claims, right? For sure. So it claims other attributes. So we can't select. If we want to say that we're, we're talking about God's attributes as per X theological tradition, uh -huh. we have to include all the attributes of God Absolutely, as per that. But it shouldn't contravene any of that multiplicity. So you're yeah, great. It's accepted, it. meaning that these attributes cannot contradict each other, basically. Yeah. Accepted. Accepted. But here's what you have to understand now about the Islamic tradition. Uh -huh. That the way we, we conceive of the attributes of God is in a tripartite classification. So what you have is you have what you refer to as the intrinsic attributes of God, mm -hmm. then you have the will of God, and then you have what you refer to as the, 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 the action-based uh, attributes of God. So, for instance, an intrinsic attribute of God is his necessity, his oneness, mm -hmm. uh, or the power of God, the omnipotence of God, the omniscience of God, and so on. Uh, the, the will is an uh, intrinsic attribute of God, but it directs the actions of God. Sure. Now, so what I'm saying is that there are some things God can decide to do uh -huh. and can decide to offset or post-date. For instance, because God has will, which we can, we can if you want, uh, argue on first principles, because God has will, He decides to do X rather than Y or Y rather than X because this is, by definition, what volition is. Uh -huh. which, means he can put, which means He can suspend the actions of X attribute in favor of the actions of Y and He can uh, he can uh, perform the actions of Y attribute rather than the actions of X and he does so based on perfect knowledge which is the intrinsic attribute of God. Does this make sense? Let me say one more time. God... Hang on, you asked me if it makes sense. Does it make sense? It could, but uh, it's a, it, it could also be interpreted as a circular argument which gives him carte blanche to do whatever he wants because it means no. that phenomenologically he doesn't have to be self-consistent no. with the way he's presented himself thus far. Oops. So although it might be a valid interpretation of reality, it's you'd have to you'd have to demonstrate you would have to demonstrate the circularity. I also point out, just as a sideline, and we won't go here, yes. it's interesting that you are happy to suddenly have a vaguely Trinitarian nature to God when I know uh, no, with well, Christ, you, you can understand the idea no, look, of therefore breaking one look, thing down into look. three, yes? Uh, well, well, of course. Uh, good. It would be, uh, it would be listen, nice to, in the end of debates with the Christians, if occasionally <laughs> Tony, keep hammering to the truth. Tony, listen to me. Yeah. Tony, there's a world of difference between talking about three persons and three uh, three types of attributes. So you're clever enough to understand that. Yeah, yeah. Let me give you... Let me. I, I, let, just, I just don't believe this. Tony. I don't believe that you guys can't buy the idea, of, just for a second, yeah. that hydrogen 2 plus oxygen, yeah, as a molecule, we'll all agree it's one thing, but it can manifest as a gas, it can manifest as ice, and it right. can manifest as a vapor. Now, I'm not accepting, uh, okay. I expect you to... Are you, a, are, you, are you a Christian? No, no, no. Of sorts. Okay, well, I let me, let me, what you've... Uh, you, well, you, you, a Christian Tony, wouldn't Tony, think so. I like religion. I listen religion to you, Tony. Good shit to listen say. to me. Yes. Listen yes, to me. Yes, Muhammad. Yes. What you've described is a modal understanding of God. Correct. 
Now, in, in, in modern day Christian understanding, we talk about Protestantism and Catholicism, this is seen as heretical because you have... <laughs> right, no, no problem, I'm just, let's just put that out there. First of all, the, the, why this is problematic and even is seen as problematic by the majority of philosophers of religion, yeah. William Haskar, even I, I believe uh, William Lane Craig, others see this as a problematic kind of understanding and have some other analogies to, uh, to present, is because it suggests that God can be X form or Y form yeah. or Z form. What can't happen is that water is water and ice and gas at the same time. All three doesn't. No, don't we, no we agree, but we would also agree that simultaneously it's essential nature. Are you with me, Tony? You know what? I've digressed the conversation. I, I know you have, but no, no, let's just get this out of the way. You can't. This can take time. No, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, the, uh, modalism is the idea that God changes, the Father changes to the Son, Son changes the Holy Spirit, that you have different modes of God. But this is, why this is heretical on mainstream understanding of Christianity is because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is something which should always exist co-eternally, um, co-equally and so on. But with the modal understanding, there's transformation going on. If you're talking about water to ice and ice to gas, yeah. then when water is ice, it's not gas. And when it's, when it's gas, it's not ice. And no, so there's- it's always H2O. But what we're saying is- with, It's, it's always, always H2O. No, but that's irrelevant because we're saying that the form has changed. If you, if you apply this to God, uh, Father, Son, and Lord- An aspect of the form has changed, but ontologically, the essence of the thing is consistent. Well, now, well. I also, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have to defend the people who are traditionalists because I'm not- No, no, but remember, on the tr uh, traditional Trinitarian understanding, there is no uh, idea of the Father being either the Father or the Son of the Holy Spirit at any given time. It's, the, it's, it's, it's that he's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit at all times, co equally and co I don't subscribe right, to a right. literal Christian or Muslim interpretation. Let's, going back to the. All, all, um, yeah, let's go, let's go so, back to so, the. So, so, so look, when we talk about self consistency, yeah. uh, we're talking about. We have to differentiate between. Yeah. Like we, we have to differentiate between parts and attributes. Now, H2O is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Yeah. Now, what I say is that anything that is made out of pieces is dependent. H2O is made out of pieces, therefore H2O is dependent. Now, that doesn't apply to God because there's a world of difference between attributes and parts. I, I, I literally only meant this. I meant as an, an thank you. Don't worry. As an analogy for how something can be intrinsically one thing but have three facets. Yeah. I think well, just we've, as we've an analogy, explained this. you can wrap your head around. Right, right. right. So, 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 as we've said, when Muslims just seem to be mystified by the idea of a trinity, I would hope yeah. that at least they can embrace it. It's the not mystified. I think, no, no, the, the, let's be honest. Christians have been, if you want to call it that, mystified and confused about the idea of the Trinity, which is why you've had three, you've had different schools of thought, modalism being one of them, tritheism being on the opposite end of the spectrum. So if, if it was a straightforward idea, yeah. uh, which is un, uh, mystified or otherwise unencoded, or it's not, uh, there's no element of uh, confusion in it, then there wouldn't have been such an array well, of understanding. Well, I think is, it's a tenable idea to explore. I'm not saying it's proven, <laughs> well, it's and you may well be fine. right. But we've explained, we've explained why th yeah. this idea is problematic yeah. as oh, per... it's definitely problematic. Great, good, but beautiful. It, that doesn't kill it. Do I believe it does kill it. But let's move on to the next bit. The, the, the idea is, now you said something important. I said there's a tripartite classification or categorization or compartmentalization of the attributes of God, intrinsic will and verbal attributes. These okay, are the three. I'll buy that provisionally now, for now. Now, what I'm saying is that there is a difference, and we have to make this difference, between parts and attributes, because if I were to tell you, right, that you have an electric razor, and then you have a cutthroat razor. Yeah. Right, the electric razor has many different parts. Yep. Yeah. Now, the cutthroat razor has no parts, but has more attributes. It has more functional attributes, because you can cut an orange with it, and you can cut a throat with it. So you can do more with a cutthroat razor than you can with an electric razor, despite the fact that the electric razor has more parts. So what I'm saying is that we must be able to differentiate between centers of consciousness, A, and or parts, on the one hand, or attributes on the other. With the Trinity example, you have three centers of consciousness. We go to the electric razor example. We're not going to the cutthroat razor example. With the Islamic, with the Islamic understanding is, we're going to the cutthroat razor example. We're saying God is not composed of pieces. And therefore, we can just because God is simple doesn't mean it doesn't have many attributes. Just like a cutthroat razor can do many things functionally. Okay. For the, right. for the record. So just, 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 on, just, just yeah, yeah, of course, of course. For the record, yeah. I think monism, monistic religion, is the ideal way to go. You guys are very big on it, congratulations. Okay? okay. So I think monism, I'm on, I'm on board with monism. I suspect that the Christians think that they can incorporate the concept of a trinity, maybe in a metaphorical sense, within a monistic framework, and that may be tenable. And that your hostility to it as a metaphor is maybe undue. But I think both religions, all the Abrahamic religions are essentially monistic and that's a good thing, yeah? 
It's just a shame that so much time gets spent here constantly banging on about two particular we things can where talk Christians about come at you guys about certain things. I understand. Can you answer for the justice? Because yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I'd like to get... Let, let's get... Let's sorry, get I, all right, go on back. Go on, no, but these are important preambles. Monism is something else. I, we can talk about this yeah, and, yeah. and to what extent it can be interpreted in the, within the Islamic framework, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. Let's talk about what you talked about uh, today. Yeah. Now, the question is, how can we establish, because to say something is just or unjust yeah. requires a theory of justice. Yeah. Mine is